with the redhead checking if Shin's okay, he reassures her there is not a single scratch only to be captivated by a voluptuous cutie. Sitting down, the redhead introduces herself as Maria von Messina and her friend, Sicilian von Claude. Surprised they are going to the same school, Shin shakes both Maria and the nervous Sicilian's hands, hoping to be friends in the future. Maria then cuts in, fangirling over the return of the great Merlin and the gorgeous Melita, she begins to speculate who wonderful their grandson may be. Acting suspicious, Shin heads off offering to pay the tab. With the girls chatting Maria attempts to steal Shin, only for Sicilian to demand she don't. Maria is in awe learning Sicilian has fallen for Shin, feeling hot and bothered in his presence. On the day of the entrance exam, Shin is forced to restrain a bully, having intentionally put his hands on Shin. With the bully revealing himself as Kurt von Rietzberg, he attempts to threaten Shin with his royal status, only to have August von Erlschied scare away the bully. It's revealed that August is the king's son, making Shin and August cousins, not by blood. With the exams beginning, all students take a written and magical exam. Watching other students show off their magic, Shin is embarrassed to witness such effort chanting, only to yield minute magic output. Stepping up, Shin amazes the students, able to create such destruction, with a wordless spell. As the number one student of his cohort, Shin is forced to prepare a speech. Heading home he's teased by August, as he has extra responsibility. That night, Shin enchants his uniform. When Melita finds out, she demands Shin conceal his newly modified clothes. The day of the introduction ceremony, Maria and Sicilian are both shocked to hear that Shin is the grandson of Merlin and Melita. Having been introduced to their homeroom teacher, Alfred, Marcus and his peers, Shin is told of Sicilian's terrible situation. Just then, Kurt storms in, attempting to grab Sicilian. Shin slaps away his attempt revealing him as Sicilian's fiancé and threatening to ruin her family's lives. Having heard all of this, August threatens to report Kurt's disgusting threats, leading to Kurt retreating. With August teasing Shin for heroically standing up for Sicilian, Shin offers to enchant Sicilian's clothes back at his place. With August, Shin, Maria, Sicilian and August's two escorts greeting Merlin and Melita, Melita questions whether Sicilian is worthy of Shin's help. Revealing that Shin's enchantments changes the clothes' rarity into the highest tier, royal grade. Knowing this Sicilian confesses she had intended to use Shin for her own benefit, running away, Sicilian is stopped by Melita, revealing it was all a test to determine if Sicilian had any ulterior mo- Watching as Shin enchants Sicilian's uniform, Dizium warns Shin to never reveal such a skill to anyone. Having finished enchanting everyone, except Maria's clothes, Shin takes everyone home showing off his astounding gate ability. Arriving at school the next day, his peers recommend Shin form his very own club, the same night we see Kurt having a word with his father. Beginning to grow more agitated, Kurt is knocked down and restrained, with his father shocked at such a development. The next day, Shin and friends hear word of such an incident, noting that he has grown to become like this ever since visiting Professor Strom, a man wearing patches over his eyes. Cutting to Kurt we see him visited by Strom. Visibly unable to move, Strom takes advantage of the tied-up Kurt, casting a spell on him, only to leave. Back with Shin, we see the gang strolling through campus only to be hit with a fireball from nowhere. Intercepting the spell, Shin is able to minimize the damage to minor burns, only to have them be healed instantly. Growing more sporadic, Kurt is seen completely transformed into a demon. Sensing danger, Shin demands everyone leave him and Kurt alone, afraid they'll just get in the way. Stepping up, Shin fires several shots whilst dodging Kurt's spells. Having landed the shots, Shin is shocked to see Kurt so flimsy, as normal demonoid creatures would be more resilient. Noting that Kurt can still speak, Kurt begins gathering magic, attempting to explode, taking out the entire academy with him. With no time to think, Shin is forced to decapitate Kurt. Frustrated at his options, Shin is reassured by the gang. Speculating Kurt's reason for becoming a demon was possibly artificial, Shin is awarded a medal for his service. With his newfound fame, he is introduced to two new students joining his club. Mark Bean, a blacksmith, and Olivia Stone, a food baker. Asking Mark to take a look at his sword, Shine offers to privately teach a fellow student, whilst Sicilian gets jealous. With them heading home, we cut to Professor Strom being asked to join a task force to help with the investigation of Kurt's demonization, being Kurt's mentor and a highly regarded magician Strom accepts. 
Heading to an arena, Strong realizes he's been trapped, surrounded by hundreds of mages. With nowhere to run, Strong releases a spell. With Shin walking by, a huge hole is blown in a nearby building. Catching Shin's attention, we realize Strom was able to knock out every single guard and is attempting to make an escape. Finding out Strom is the culprit for turning Kurt a demon, Shin cast a fireball at him drawing his attention. With the use of his magic blade to cut down incoming magic projectiles, and casting magic of his own, Shin's able to slice open Strom's eye patches, revealing red eyes. Baffled at how Strom is able to continue to act as a human, whilst becoming a demon, Shin is able to distract Strom long enough for his crazy spell to be cast. Makingu of the Sun, Shin amplifies its heat onto Strom. In the aftermath we see the ground tattered up, with parts becoming glass due to the immense heat. With Shin unsure about the duel, we see Strom alive, having barely managed to escape from the spell. The next day the gang visit the Mark's father's black smithing store. Offering ideas Shin awaits his blade only to stumble into an accessories store with Sizzlian. With Sizzlian's protection in mind, Shin gives her a ring. Heading to school the next day, Shin is rewarded with a treat. Reasoning it would be a test to help everyone grow stronger, he asks his peers to fortify their shield as a single layer may not be the best when it comes to defense. Additionally to inspire everyone, Shin reveals just a fraction of his magical capacity. With everyone stiffening up, due to the dense concentration of magic, Shin decides to head back to the smithing shop. Picking up his blade, he gifts the girls similar rings to ensure their protection, remarking that if a war was to ever break out, he would not hesitate to fight for his friend's safety. Within the next few days, we see a neighboring kingdom overrun with demonoid creatures. With Strom as the leader, he has acquired an army of humanoid demons. Having heard the news, Alfred informs the class that they'll begin training with knights immediately, in preparation of a possible war. The students throw a fit, knowing that knights are arrogant and think lowly of magicians. Grouping up with some knights, Shin warns them to not be cocky or it'll lead to their death, only for them to cling onto their pride stating that a demon will not show up during their training. Greeting Shin at his destination as his big sis and big bro. Adored by peers and the knights, the whole gang begin traveling through the forest. Spotting an approaching demon, the knights attempt to slay it themselves, stating the best of their cohort. When they are all brought to their knees, Shin steps in slaying the beast. Supporting the knights, Sizzlian begins healing the male knights, whilst the female knight and Shin get jealous. Towards the end of the route, Shin's big bro notifies everyone there is a hundreds of demon beast heading their way. Getting serious, Shin intercepts them, casting a fire blast to incinerate all the creatures along with flattening the scenery. Shocked, the knights finally swallow their pride, apologizing for underestimating the magicians. Additionally they realize that they should leave Sizzlian alone as they mistaken them to be dating, which in turn causes Sizzlian and Shin to deny such a comp- Now on good terms, the knights are able to work efficiently with the magicians, with Shin's big bro commending them on their rapid improvements, we reconvene at camp where we see other teams weren't so lucky, with one team overloading their magic, trying to show off, and another having made enemies with the knights. Realizing Shin hasn't said a word, August announces to the members that they'll now be under watch for their protection, having been trained and learned such high-tier magic. Realizing that his friends aren't as strong as he'd like, Shin decides to hold a training camp at Sizzlian's place, where they'll be accompanied by Merlin and Melita. A few days later whilst heading to their destination, the gang encounter a pack of demon beast. Drawing straws, Shin is impressed to see his peers' magic casting improvements. Arriving at Sizzlian's place, Shin and Sizzlian are teased by her attendants. Later that night whilst bathing, Merlin and Melita thank Shin's peers for always giving Shin company, with them both afraid he would be alone forever. The next day Shin and August return to the manor, only to be greeted by August's fiancé, Elizabeth von Coriel and August's younger sister, Mae von Earls Hyde. Jealous of August's camping trip, they're able to persuade August's father to take the two with them to the camp. Impressed by Shin's use of the gate, Ellis and May greet Melita, Merlin and Shin's peers. With May misinterpreting Sizzlian and Shin as a couple, Sizzlian accidentally replies with the possibility of having Shin's babies. Embarrassed, she darts off. Later that night, Shin decides to have a chat with Sizzlian. Finding it as the opportune moment, Shin confesses to Sizzlian, asking her to date him. 
accepting they lean in for a kiss, only for their peers to reveal themselves eavesdropping on their conversation, ending it as a break from training. The next day the gang play volleyball, allowing the use of magic. Ending the day off the gossip about past relationships, only for Melita to storm into the room. With everyone hiding in groups together, Shin and Sizilian ultimately make noise, giving themselves up and receive a scolding. Informing Sizilian's parents of their engagement, her parents are ecstatic, mentioning her dream had finally occurred. Later that day Shin shows off a new spell, enchanting and time allows it to float. When it's done to Shin, it allows him to fly. With that Shin equips the gang with newly enchanted clothes, as the next mission will be quite dangerous. Leaving Mei and Ellis behind, they begin slaying Demon Beast, with Shin proud of their improved strengths. The gang eventually head back preparing for Shin and Sizilian's engagement party. With the conclusion of the party, Shin and Sizilian sneak outside. With Shin officially engaged to Sizilian, they share a kiss. Cutting to Strom, we learn of his past. As lord of a village he always tried to treat his laborers as equal even marrying a lovely wife. One day fellow villagers attacked and burned down his house whilst he was out. Storming in he sees his lifeless wife, accused of enslaving villagers Strom figures out neighboring empires swayed the villagers to bring him down, in hopes of capturing his land after he had been killed. Understanding the twisted world he lives in, Strom converts himself into a demon murdering all the villagers in his land. A few days later we see August being crowned the next king. Before the completion of the ceremony, the king is notified of demons spotted near the city. Having prepared for this, Shin and Piers are summoned, heading off to battle. Swooping in and saving civilians, the gang immediately begin dispatching humanoid demons quite easily. Whilst the battle rages on we see Zest, Strom's third in command, observe Shin's power, only to be blown away not only at his capabilities but his peers as well. With no other option Zest is forced to stall whilst the remaining troops retreat. Pouncing from location to location, Zest immediately disposes of shorter students. Taking her as hostage, Zest uses her to dispose of several other students. About to kill them, Shin interrupts. Drawing her attention, Shin misses her neck barely. With Maria asking if Shin needs assistance, Zest sees an opening. Smashing Maria into the ground, Zest releases several magic blasts onto the students. Unable to carry the injured, Shin prioritizes protecting his peers over tracking her escape. Having lost sight of her, the team gathers at a nearby hall. We see Sizilian trying her best at keeping someone alive, unwilling to give up, she's hopeless to see the wounded life slowly slipping away. Coming to the rescue Shin heals the man, whilst Sizilian feels helpless. Reassuring the people Sizilian has healed encourages her to keep growing. Having ended the war for now, the gang returned all in one piece. Thanks for watching. Check out one of our other videos. Like, comment and subscribe.